Well, it's great to be here. We get a chance to play under Bill Walton's jersey. <laughs> um, so it's been a while since I've been in this building. It's a beautiful place. So we're excited to be here. Obviously, um, b different experience for our guys. We haven't, we don't have anybody on our team that played in the NCAA tournament um, with the public practice, seeing you guys in person. This is all new to them. So we were in the bubble last year. So that was all they know. So they've been asking me questions the last couple of days about all this, you know, what's all this type of stuff. So you realize, uh, for me, try to not take it for granted, you know, so, uh, cause I realize it's, I wasn't even thinking about like, you know, it's back to normal, but like guys are like wide eyed, you know, to be able to experience this in a non pandemic situation. So we're excited to be here. I know Akron's got a, got a great team. They've won eight in a row. John's a, a tremendous coach. So we're completely focused on Akron. Uh, ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Uh, I have to ask you the number one question I've been asked by people today uh -oh. is, is Hep Cronin here? <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. And he's already 1-0 and in big games because he went down. Scott Davenport had him come down for their championship game. He got – and uh, my, he's, Hep's already taken credit for Bellarmine's conference tournament championship. So, But he lands this evening. Tark Patel, Los Angeles Daily News. Coach, just a little bit more on the zips um, and maybe yep. some of their, the challenges they present to you and uh, things you're concerned about. Yeah, they're just a rock solid team, Tark. You know, um, obviously, uh, Castaneda is a great guard. But Ali Ali, can, he can make guarded baskets. Uh, you know, Freeman does a lot of things. Um, so, you know, they, they obviously they're not maybe as big as some Pac-12 Pac teams. But uh, they're, I only look at, like, who they are now. They went through some attrition. Uh, and since they, since they had a, the last guy that was off their team for whatever reason, but I didn't pay attention to that. But they're 8-0. No. <laughs> so they've done everything well. Uh, so they got go-to. They got a great guard that can make tough shots. Uh, they got a go-to forward that can make shots over people. I mean, he makes real shots. I mean, he's playing unbelievably well. And I always look at a team's stats, like their last five, their last ten. They're shooting over, like over 41% from three in that group of games. And then John's always been a great coach. So they play tremendous defense. They don't have any liabilities as far as, like, guys that can't guard the ball. Um, so, and they had to beat probably the, the three best teams at the end of the year besides them to get here in Buffalo, Toledo, and Kent State. Now, I know Kent State had issues, uh, but still – you know, that they, they've had to be good teams to be here. So they got our full attention. Hey, Coach. Jeff Rab Johns from Peaks.com. I'm working on a story on Michael Lewis. Yes. And like your thoughts on two things. When you interviewed him, you decided to hire him because of what things stood out. And as you've worked with him, what impresses you the most about him? Um, well, I've known Michael for a long time. So we go back to our days in the OVC um, when uh, he was in the Metropolis of uh, Mattoon, Illinois. I was with the racers, so that's when we first met. And then, you know, in our part of the world back there, uh, you know, recruiting, we had seen each other quite a bit. He was at Butler. I'm the head coach at Cincinnati. So, you know, Michael's got a great personality, as you know. So we spent a lot of time just talking basketball together and really got to know each other well. Um, so I was fortunate that he was available. I was looking, Darren and I have been together so long with Rod and Michael, I wanted, I believe in hiring guys from winners. Uh, Rod's coming from San Diego State, tremendous program, great coach, Brian Dutcher. Michael had been with Tim Miles, who won big at Nebraska in spite of the way it ended. <laughs> um, it should have never ended, but anyway, uh, you know, and he was also with Brad at, at, and Chris Holton. So the, he could bring me fresh ideas, uh, but I don't expect to have Michael much longer. I mean, you know, again, I'm biased. Uh, the Ball State job's open. I don't think you couldn't possibly draw up a better candidate to be the head, next head coach of Ball State than Michael Lewis, in my opinion. He's talented. He's, he's got everything it takes, from the basketball experience to the coaching uh, to he fits that job, his personality. Uh, just, it's just, he just needs a chance. 
So I, you know, I, I think that's hopefully, hope, hopefully uh, he'll get that chance. But I don't expect him to be with me much longer. But he's just done a great job for us. Coach, Jason Quick with The Athletic. Uh, what was the hardest point of your season, and, and what did you learn from your team in that time? Um, I mean, aside from the injuries and the COVID, uh, we lost, we, we, the schedule sometimes does it to you. So uh, we, the, we lost three out of four now. Um, one of those was at Arizona. One of those was at USC. Great teams on the road. And uh, both those games, you know, we didn't get blown out. We, we, had, we missed a shot to tie USC at the buzzer. We lost in triple overtime to Arizona State. So, but we're not used to losing. Um, I'm proud that our program's at a point where, like, we just don't accept it. So that was the toughest part. Um, but I think, you know, that it helps you as a coach to evaluate what the job you're doing. And, you know, how do I make sure we got to improve somehow? We weren't scoring enough points. Get it, we were dealing with injuries. But still, we had to make some offensive adjustments. I think, it, you know, we, we came out of it a better team. So, uh, you know, but that's what happens when you play good teams on the road in a big time league. You're not going to win every game, but uh, you still got to use it to get better. And I think we've improved immensely from the last one of those, of that three out of four was that the loss at USC. So if you look at us statistically, we've improved a lot since then. So has there been a defining characteristic that has kind of defined this team throughout this season? Well, they get along extremely well. Like, we have great team chemistry. You know, these guys really like each other. They're all tremendous guys. Um, you know, we don't have overwhelming size and athleticism like some other teams. Uh, so we have, to, we have to execute and play great team defense. Um, but what I would tell you is, like, they're just a really, really good group of guys. Like, they're really intelligent. They're good people. They really enjoy each other, uh, and which I think is important because it, it, when we've had tough times, it's, we, we can look at each other and uh, what do we got to do to get better instead of pointing fingers. And I think that's why we've been able to get through the COVID and the multiple injuries that we've dealt with this year. And I think we're, you know, we played great basketball in the Pac-12 tournament, albeit not winning the last game. Marla Ridenour, Akron Beacon Journal. Hello. Hi. Uh, I assume when you said you were talking about the go-to forward who can make real shots. Ali assume, Ali. Yeah. It just, does he jump out? Oh, yeah. Like on film? You don't see a lot of guys on film that, that can create their own shot and make it the way in college basketball. I would say – uh, in college basketball, back, back, it's been 20 years since I've been an assistant, but I used to tell Coach Huggins, Coach Patino all the time, like, there's a rare time when, you, 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 when you're going to give a scouting report that a guy can make shots while he's guarded. Post guys need an angle to score. Shooters need to get freed up to make a shot. Um, he, he doesn't need any of that. I mean, he, make, what I would, he makes some Kevin Durant shots. At six eight, just bang bang, create a little space and just shoot it over you. I mean, he he's he's really really good. And just being an Ohio guy, I know you. Do you like to see another Ohio team in the oh. tournament? I mean, just happy for John. I know you know. Um, I know a couple guys on the staff as well. Um, you know, good for them. I know how hard it is. The MAC is a being from where I'm from. I was I've explained to our team like. Look up NBA players from the MAC conference. It's really a hard league to win. There's, there's really good players. It's a well-balanced league. It's like a mini Big Ten. I mean, so it, it's, it's great coaching, and there's historically been some great players. Um, Ali Ali may be the next NBA player out of the MAC. Um, so I, I'm well aware of the quality of play in that league. Jeff Longville, WZIP Akron, over here. Um, given that you guys went on a run last year, do you think that momentum has carried over into this year? Uh, early on, I think it was almost like a little bit of a hangover for us. So um, it was such a euphoric run for our guys that they hadn't, we had guys hadn't never been to the NCAA tournament. So it just, I think it took us a while to get it out of our system. You know, so much talk about the, the great game, 
against Gonzaga, the way we lost, that we, ne we needed to get that behind us and just get our focus on this year and this team. So I think that took us a while. But, you know, hopefully now with the experience of winning games in March, our guys understand how we won last year, which was attention to detail, execution, uh, toughness, defense, you know, focus on one game at a time and a game plan, um, which, you know, we had the mentality like we, we were not overconfident and it helped us. We have to make sure we're not overconfident this year. Jake Marin, WZIP Akron. Enrique Freeman of the Zips was named MAC Defensive Player of the Year this year, and Akron was the best defensive team in their conference. How do you anticipate challenging the Zips defense? Well, we'll see. Um, he's quick off his feet, impressive player. And they're a young team, by the way, so it's, you know, the, which I see why they've improved so much. Um, so, but he, he can block shots, both hands. Very, very quick off his feet, a high energy player, just a very, very impressive player. Uh, and but I would say their whole team—they don't have a weak—they don't have a weakness of a guy that just they need to cover for. They all seem to be able to guard their man really well. They have lateral quickness, is what I'm trying to say, as well as they're extremely well coached. All five guys are engaged defensively for Akron on every possession. That's what jumps out on the film to me. Um, so we, we, we're going to have to execute and uh, be at our best. They're not just going to give you baskets. Do we have any questions from the Zoom room? If you do, raise your hand. There's a Zoom room? There is a Zoom room. And we do have a question. Uh, Patrick Waring, uh, MBS Sports Hour. Uh, go ahead. Hey. hey, Coach, you just mentioned uh, your guys being a close group. Uh, obviously, uh, you're there to, you know, to take care of business on the court. But can you kind of talk about maybe what the guys are doing just to kind of stay loose or in, you know, in the downtime? Um, well, we didn't get in until last night, but when, so there's not like not a lot to do right now. Go out to eat, and then there, there's so many commitments here. Um, you know, the uh, the guys from uh, Beaverton. You know, obviously we're new with the Nike. We're a Jordan school. I'd like to take them down there, but we really don't have time. Um, but, uh, you know, this day and age, man, these guys, I, I, they're going to be up here. So if you if you get back in, I, I know there's arguments about Sm Smash Brothers. Does that sound right? <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah, that, that, you know. So that's the, the, big, the big argument on our team right now is who's the best player at that. And I don't know if I'm saying the game right, but – so that, that's the big thing right now. Uh, watching the team during the run last year, you played with an edge that every guy seemed locked in and valuing every possession defensively, adhering to your principles. How do you get that from basically one to 10 on the, on the team? It wasn't just a handful of guys. It was basically everybody on the team. How do you get that? Well, we try to, um, you know, be, be in the, being that I'm wearing his replica jacket and, you know, try to channel, our, you know, the things that Coach Wooden taught. Starts with humility. See, if you have humility, you're going to pay attention. And so hopefully uh, the Akron film has got their attention because they got some very good players. Um, and then experience should tell us that we, we need to make sure that we're, we, ha we have humility. If you have it, then you're going to prepare your best for every game. Um, and it's like my, Fred, my friend Chad Brownstein says, show me a guy Show me a guy that's not humble, and I'll show you a guy that's getting ready to be humbled. So, and we taught some people that last year. So, but we're not, you know, it's a little different because we're obviously a different seed this year. But we need to make sure we have the same level of humility and respect for our opponents. That's how you stay locked in, and that's, that's, to me, that's why people stay focused, whether it's in business, in life, anything. To me, the minute you lose that edge and you start, you start to lose your, your humility is when you're, you're not going to be at your best. All right, we're going back to the Zoom room. Uh, Tracy Pearson, go ahead. Hey, Coach Cronin. 
Where you at, man? What, what, what's the, the budget? <laughs> Tracy's the budget hurting or something? <laughs> I'm absolutely there in spirit. Um, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, you touched on it. I wanted to ask you about that jacket. If you're trying to channel a little bit of the John Wooden spirit wearing that jacket. <laughs> Same one as last year, man. Same one. Actually, this is a new one. Um, so, uh, and, and don't don't send me emails. I can't get you one. <laughs> Doug Erickson at UCLA. <laughs> He's the guy, not me. So, uh, yeah, look, look. when you're a part of the best tradition in, in maybe sports, but definitely college basketball, uh, I might walk out in a uh, Bill Walton jersey tomorrow, So, especially since we're here. So we try to embrace it in every way we can.